Hi everyone, welcome to the 2021 plan with me. Um, I'm Lisa, if you're new here or if you just accidentally stumbled on this video. Uh, I have been trying to do for the last few months just a plan with me video to kind of just tell you what's been going on and hopefully help you just get excited about organizing your year or really just your month. I'm just, I'm all about monthly planning and also get excited about the start of something new. I think like everybody right now is just super happy that 2020 is ending uh, for a ton of different reasons. Um, but just in general, I think all of us get excited about the end of a week or the end of a month and especially about the end of a year. And I don't know why. I wasn't really excited about the end of a decade. It was just like a little too, um, too much to think about, or I don't know. I don't know that I really had a bad decade, so it wasn't a big deal to get excited about the new decade. Anyways, I moved my desk around. I don't know if you've noticed. I used to be on that side of the room, but it wasn't as bright. And now that I'm sitting here, I'm like, well, maybe it's a little too bright on this side of the room. But I really just wanted more light. And for some reason, I thought there would be more light on the other side, uh, but there's, there's not. Let me see if I can pull down a shade to make it a little less brightish, I guess. Ah, there, no, nope. bright again. Oh well, well it's better than being dark because sometimes I go to people's live streams and it's really dark and then I can't see anything um, or it just looks creepy like a dungeon. <laughs> so women in the zone, I'm excited about this. Good, me too. Sharice, you're back. Hello, hello. Um, oh, I can show comments. I forgot. It's StreamYard. I like switched over just so I could show comments and I always keep forgetting to click on them. Um, Rory, hi, awesome. Okay, so just so you know, there's no workbook for today because I didn't want you to feel compelled to like fill out a bunch of stuff. So hopefully you have a pen and a paper and you can just start taking some notes on things that you want to or not taking notes on things that you don't want to. And that's kind of just all we're gonna do today. So let me go ahead and share my screen because I have a gazillion slides to make it through. Um, because that's just how I am. <laughs> so let's see. Hi, Alicia. And Britt, so excited. I was just watching your video on courses. Awesome. Okay, I am going to try to make this huge. So hopefully it's really big and you can see everything. All right, so I really believe in monthly planning. So this is really our January plan with me. Um, can you guys see this? Yes, you can. All right. So just a couple, just some housekeeping things to get out of the way really quick. So the first one is I had a pretty epic Christmas Day sale. Like, I'm not going to tell you what it was because then you're going to be sad you missed it. But it was pretty amazing. I already deleted the post. But I don't know if you guys know this, I am not, I didn't send out an email because one, it was Christmas day. And two, um, I am not on social media anymore. So pretty much YouTube is my only social media outlet uh, aside from communicating with you guys on uh, email. So I posted it as a YouTube post and I don't know, maybe you guys don't go on YouTube every day, um, which is totally fine, but you probably missed it. So. What you might want to do so you don't miss these at least while you're on YouTube because it was the first time I had done a flash sale in four years so don't worry too much about it but if you want to make sure you know about like last minute things if I don't want to send an email to like everybody I will post them on YouTube to the community so underneath this video if you are not subscribed it will be red. If it's grayed out and it says subscribe to like past tense, that means you're already subscribed. So just make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And then there's a second part that everyone forgets about. You actually have to hit the bell. So next to subscribe, so now that it's grayed out, now that I've hit subscribe on, the, on this channel, you'll see a little bell and underneath there, you can elect to hear all notifications, personalized notifications or none. I honestly do not know what personalized notifications are. I think personalized just means like I have to actually call you out whatever your YouTube handle is and then I will get it or maybe it's a personal like based on your settings but either way you want to make sure you select all and then you won't miss any announcements because over in the community tab on YouTube if you physically go in there and click on that then you'll see announcements if you don't have the bell 
uh, checked so that you get notifications. So just something new. If you've never used YouTube before, <coughs> excuse me, make sure to hit the subscribe button and then make sure to hit the, uh, the bell and select all. So because you missed it, I am doing another flash sale. So, and I did send an email last night. So for today only until midnight, you can get 20% off of everything. And I really mean everything, even planner academies on sale. So we're going to talk about the, that at the end too, because I have a special bonus. Um, so if you use the code by 20, like B Y E, not B U I by 20, then you're going to get 20% off anything you select in the shop. Now, keep in mind too, when you, the way that it's set up is anything that's a digital planner, as long as you buy the original planner first. So let's say you want to buy the wedding planner pop-up shop, you get 20% off. And then right when you check out, after you finish checking out, it will give you 50% off of the, um, of what am I trying to say? 50% off of the digital planner version of that same planner if you want it. So that's how it works for everything that has a digital planner. But let's go ahead and get started. So here's our agenda for today. So we're going to talk mostly about the problem because I really think the problem is, and I harp on this all the time, is goal setting. And I just think it's like an evil four letter word. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the solution that you can do instead. And then the solution is all these six steps, which we'll go through in detail. And I'll show you how I do mine. And then we'll just talk about like, my 2020 year in review, which is actually super quick. Like when I did a 2020, when I do a monthly year in review, it takes forever uh, just because I can remember all the details. But again, because it's been a year, I, I honestly don't even remember what I did in February. So it's basically just three screens of highlights for the year. Um, and then we'll go right into January um, deliverables and deadlines, kind of how I set those up. Uh, and then I'll have my special offer for Planner Academy, and then we'll do the giveaway, which I know a lot of you are excited for. So um, that will be at the end. And I also will be revealing my secret project, which I'm hoping to roll out in April, but I was just talking about this with another group. It might not be till July, but for sure that's already in the works um, and being worked on. So I'm really excited about launching that program this year. All right. So what's the problem? So the problem is, and I really like, I think what people have been doing, trying to do is solving this by having the 90 day year. I think uh, Tim Herman or whatever his name is, tried to do that. It was like a huge, I shouldn't say tried. I think it was very successful and made millions of dollars off that program. Um, and then a ton of people have also not even related to him at all prior to that, before his program even came out, um, had what's called the 12 week year or a quarterly goal system, right? Or something just to focus, basically just to shorten the amount of time that you focus on. Um, so what's the problem with annual goals? The problem really is that they actually have done studies where it is a barrier to high performance because the year is so long. So you just think in January, like especially right now when you're thinking about this time next year and all the Christmas movies you're going to watch uh, next December, it seems like forever away, right? Like you still have to make it through spring, then you got summer, you got vacations, hopefully once things start opening up again, and then you have fall and you have school again, right? So thinking about December, you're like, I have so much time. I don't even have to start working on whatever goal I've set for the year right now because it is like a gazillion years away. Um, and it creates this thing, this like false reality where you just think two things when you have time, but also you just think I'm going to wait because even if my sales aren't doing well right now, or my business isn't doing well or whatever project I'm on is kind of like slow to ramp up, I'm going to improve later in the year, which is actually false. You don't get better as time goes on. Um, you should just be trying to strive for high performance all the time. So, and it also kind of just says it's okay to procrastinate when you have annualized goal planning. Um, I remember, so I love power sheets because they're beautiful and they're pretty, but I remember with power sheets, it had like a gazillion things that you had to do. And I just thought, this is crazy that I have to plan for so many different things. Um, when like, I don't know, like how am I supposed to keep track and remember that I have to, I think there were like 10 categories, like family, health, uh, wealth, career, right? <laughs> like, I don't even have time to worry about all those things. Like even if, if I did a recap of the last year, I don't think I even focused on those things. So, you know, the less you, it's all about doing less and focusing on less so that you can get better results. Um, 
I don't know if anyone knows this. I always feel compelled to tell people this because I am guilty of this. I used to say this during all of those awful, boring corporate meetings to try to compel people and help convince them that goals were the way to go. And if they made some goals, that they were not only going to be successful, they were going to get a raise, they were going to get a great bonus, uh, and also they were going to join this elite club of super overachievers that are wealthy beyond means because they had written down their goals. So this fake study has really compelling uh, statistics on why you should do goals, but it actually never happened. It's a huge urban myth, right? It's like the fake news that everyone tries to rule out on Facebook when something comes up. But for whatever reason, this is a study they said happened in 1953. And it's been perpetuated for over half a century as being reality. Um, so I actually never even knew it was fake until recently. Uh, so don't worry about goals. They're not important. Uh, so I don't know if you know this. In December, there's this weird phenomenon where the best sales month of the year is always December. The best revenue always happens in the last quarter. Uh, and it's because everyone has a deadline. So we're going to talk about deadlines because they do work uh, and they do matter. And not having them or having them so far away out in the future is pointless. So we're really just going to talk about shortening those up. Um, New Year's resolution, same thing, has 80% failure rate. So we're going to talk about how we can make a resolution uh, and maybe just make one resolution and why that's the better option to go with. So why am I so against annual planning? This is actually a really cute book that you should read. My friend Molly wrote this. It's a cozy mystery. Uh, it's clean. It's funny. Um, but anyways, you're not a fortune teller. So you are, you know, trying to make your annual plans based on assumptions of what the market is doing right now, what the political environment is, how many sales you're going to get, how well you're going to do. And then you're making more assumptions on top of that. Like this will happen in January and then in February I'll do this and then March I will do this, right? Like it's like I'm saying, I think I'm gonna roll out this secret project in April, but I don't know, it is way too early for me to tell. Maybe it will be July, uh, maybe it won't. So that's also the problem with annualized planning. It's just way too far out in the future. Uh, so like, for example, 2020, right? Who knew COVID was gonna happen? Um, a lot of people went out of business uh, because of their, uh, well, whatever, what happened with Black Lives Matter. Some people just weren't either as sensitive as they uh, could have been, or they were just, they just made some silly mistakes uh, and they're like there are agents um, agencies like I know you guys don't <laughs> probably aren't authors but there's a few literary agencies that just went out of business um, as you know in the planner world there are a couple people that had to step down from being CEOs of their corporations because of things that they had said so you know I'm pretty sure that was a surprise for them. And so same thing with me, personal just wise, Ben's leg, that was a huge surprise for me, right? Like I didn't know I was gonna have to, uh, that it was going to require so much care and take so much attention and that I would be so exhausted. Um, you know, I lost a bunch of files last week with Big Sur, or not last week, last month. Um, I had no idea I was going to have some legal issues last month either, uh, or sick days, just like, I actually wasn't sick a lot, but just sick days in general, just, throw off your whole schedule, right? So, you know, the whole problem with annual planning is you're assuming all conditions will remain perfect and that your future predictions will be just great. And as time goes on and you think about, um, you know, your goals for December, I mean, you should just laugh at yourself. Like they're just not going to, like maybe they'll happen. But if you think about the past years and all the goals that you made, like probably the things that you thought would happen in November and December, most likely didn't happen at all, right? You don't even know who's going to visit or who's going to host Thanksgiving, right? Like those things are all like out the window. And I love planning like to the nth degree, right? Like I am high consistency. I could do the same thing every day, like Groundhog's Day, I'd be super happy. Um, but I still like, I still have to like adjust really for reality and how the world works, even though I would like to do and I would love to do the same thing every single day. Um, so let's just talk before I go into the solution. Let me see if anyone has any questions. Um, uh, oh, there's more people here. Uh, Lisa, I see you have a new book. Uh, yeah, I do. Thank you. Um, Tammy, Tanya, hi. Uh, Donna Cole, hi Lisa. I just love all your videos. Oh, 
because they're so sweet. Uh, Donna, happy new year. Uh, Camille, hello everyone. Donna, buy 20. Yes, that's the code to save 20%. Um, Denise, hi. Ta Tamira, hi. Chrissy at Ombre Rainbow Family, hi. Uh, Alyssa Fink, hi. I recognize all of your names from Planner Academy and Boss School. Liz Ford, power sheets are beautiful, but I never use the whole planner. I know, right? Like, they're so pretty. In fact, I even have one laying around somewhere as a prop. <laughs> it's just a decoration now. Um, Sharice, I bought power sheets. I'm hoping I can stick to it. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. I haven't, Chrissy, I still haven't started my power sheets prep. It's sitting next to me. It's a lot of work. It's fake, really? I know, right? It's totally fake. I couldn't believe it either. Um, what? <laughs> Mind blown, I know. I quote it all the time. Like, I feel like it not only shaped me, but it like, I felt compelled to preach it to others. <laughs> like, it's like that telephone game where you just say something and you just believe it. Um, Therese, I use goals as targets, cool. Chrissy, for sure, I was completely incapacitated for two weeks because of a slow diagnosis of severe bladder inflammation and then subsequent surgery, then another two weeks of recovery. Yeah, you just never know, like, especially when they do recovery. Like I had um, an ectopic pregnancy, I wanna say like three or three years ago, maybe two and a half years ago. And they were like, don't worry, you will be up. And I feel like this was a man who said this, like he was like, you will be up and running in like two days. I'm like, really, two days? He's like, yeah, you'll be fine. There was no way I could be up and running. He was like insane. Um, it took like two months to recover. Leah McCastle, hey girl, there. Jade War 277 I love your ID video on calendar design, InDesign video on calendar design, you saved me, thanks. Awesome, so glad to hear that. Uh, Vertel Marie, hey girl, hey, hi. Uh, Michaela, 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 hi. Uh, Sasha, I so need to get myself organized for 2021. You guys, Sasha is another amazing author you should read. So she's a romance author and she writes sweet romances and she writes a lot of like women's fiction. Uh, it's not really women's, it's romance, but it's like that touchy feely where afterwards you feel happy and it's like a Hallmark movie. So definitely check out Sasha's books. Uh, Darlene, weekly and daily planning so much easier to accomplish. Yes, we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that. Jana, hi. Obviously, sometimes it doesn't work out. Janice, surgery is not a joke. Yeah, right? Like, they, it is not at all. Lisa, ask him when was the last time he had a child. Yeah, for sure. Remember, like, I remember the doctor. I went back and I was like, I think there's something wrong. And he's like, yeah, you so should have been fine by now. And I was like, okay. So then you, like, feel bad as well. So, Chrissy, ectopic surgery is very similar to gallbladder surgery. I get it. Yeah, they, like, they took the full everything out. Sasha, thank you. Yes. All right, guys, let's go back to the slides. I'll check in again after the next session. Um, so where am I? I'm over here. All right. So let's talk about the solution. And so this is a little bit longer. It's really simple, though. Here's my solution with my really terrible clip art. Basically, all you have to do is make a wish list. And this wish list can be anything you want. Like, don't try to limit yourself, because I do this a lot with the wish list. I'm like, well, is this really going to help me with world domination, right? <laughs> is this really going to help me get to become a seven-figure person? Um, instead, just make a, like it says, like a dream wish list. Like, all the things that you wish that you could do or hope to do or are thinking about doing, uh, and just get them down. So you don't have to worry, because I think sometimes with the goals, everyone's like, you need to prioritize prioritize. And then you need to, you know, think about break those down in, into tasks, which always cracks me up. And then, you know, plan it out. And that's just honestly, way too much thinking for your brain to do. And not that we're dumb, but it's just too much to synthesize. And honestly, the more you plan out, the less accurate it's, it's going to be, unless you are in charge of being a project manager for a construction or for real estate or something like that, you don't need to break these down into smaller tasks until it is time to actually do that. Um, then you're going to do monthly planning. So basically, you're going to take your wish list and you're going to say, OK, so January, I kind of know what I can and can't do and what I want to get accomplished this month or what just feels fun to do. So I'm going to go to my wish list and I'm going to pick out four things, five things, however you feel like it, and then plug it into your monthly plan. Then you're going to assign deadlines to everything, because like we said, if you don't have a deadline, does it really ever get done? And then next, you're going to say, OK, this is basically just a list of deliverables. like. 
I need to write an email. I need to create a sales page. I need to create a workbook. I need to get 5,000 words done, right? And then finally, we're gonna do a day-to-day -day task. So like all of your goals should be changing, or not goals, all of your deliverables, your tasks and everything, how you're spending your time should be able, you should be flexible enough that you're changing that on a daily basis uh, because you just never know what's going to happen from one day to the next. And honestly, there's been some days where all of a sudden I'll look at the clock, like right now it's 1230 and I'll say, oh my God, I can't believe it's 1230. I've done nothing. I don't even know what I've been doing. I've been sitting in front of a computer. I don't know if this happens to anybody else. And I'm like, I'm clicking on things. I haven't left. I haven't even eaten breakfast. It's time for me to eat lunch because I feel kind of hungry now, but I haven't really accomplished anything today. So you need to reassess and replan your day or replan the next day because you didn't do like the four things you thought you could do between 8 a.m. and noon because um, they just didn't get done for whatever reason. So coping with uncertainty. So I have a lot of like, I don't want to say anxiety, but like worry about um, when things are not set or schedules don't go according to plan or like, this is like a big reason why I think I always say opposites attract. Like I like everything planned out to the very second. And if I ask Ben like, oh, like this is a perfect example. Yesterday I was like, so we have two pounds of ground beef and you want a hamburger. So is your hamburger, do you want me to make it now? Or do you want to do both burgers and we'll put one in the fridge? Or should we go back, put the other one in the freezer? Like, I feel like these are very logical questions for planning. And he like went ballistic. He's like, what are you doing? You're like controlling me, <laughs> micromanaging me. I'm like, I'm just trying to plan for dinner. And he's like, we'll just decide when it's time. I was like, when is that? He's like, I don't know, whenever we feel hungry. And then we'll talk about what to do about dinner. Like. It just blew my, it was like 1230, I think at that same time. And I was like, why can't we just plan now, right? Like, so dealing with uncertainty is like something I'm not comfortable with at all. So if you kind of feel the same way, like my favorite person is Dale Carnegie. So I don't know that he like stops you from like wanting to plan, but he just kind of helps you to mentally be okay with the fact that there are people like Ben in the world that don't like to plan a lot of things. And those are people that you have to live with and work with. Um, and you know, that's just something that will happen. So like my worry is like, will the meat go bad? You know, can it be fro defrosted and then refroze? I know these are like crazy questions. I don't even cook. So maybe that's part of the why. But, you know, a lot of things you worry about are never going to happen. This happens to me all the time. And honestly, I think when I sit there and I do nothing, I think a lot of the times I ended up just wasting time worrying about something like Straight up, I just spent maybe four and a half hours not only worrying about the meat, but looking up meat and then looking up meat safety. I mean, this is, I'm like throwing this example to death, but it's always kind of this weird thing where you recall negative things more than positive. And don't feel bad about it. Like they say something like you have 6,000 thoughts a day and most of them are negative. Uh, so it's not about stopping the thoughts. It's more about just having them and kind of just, just letting them go because for whatever reason, we're biased to think that they're true and we kind of stick on them. And then that also like blocks our productivity. So again, like I don't talk a lot about mindset, but I know that for sure I have this problem. So if you have that problem too, this is just something that has helped me. And because I've had that problem, the reason we're going into wish lists is because sometimes I'm not sure what to do. And I will just do things like I said, I will just worry and then I will worry about contingency plans and then I'll look up statistics and then I will look up awful blog posts about like worst case scenarios. And so I think having this wish list is really good because it helps you to have a lot of activities that you want to do that you've already kind of pre-decided are things that are healthy and good for you and things that you want to work on um, versus just like wondering what should I be worrying, worrying about or what should I be focused on? Um, and that's kind of the whole point of having that list. And it's the same thing if you've noticed sometimes if you worked super hard all day, like let's say you were volunteering somewhere, especially physical labor, I feel like this doesn't happen as much because you don't have as much time to think. Um, and sometimes, honestly, when you think things, over uh you just waste a lot of time doing nothing or being in unproductive or just kind of like making yourself miserable so um so this is all about taking action and doing stuff and i come from a blue collar family i'm the only person in my family that went to college everybody is a shift worker an hourly worker uh they work 
they get overtime, they, you know, do Sundays because it's double time. Um, and so I'm just used to people working really hard. Uh, no one's ever like, let me try to hack my job and only work three hours this week and see if I can still make the same paycheck. Like I don't come from that type of background. And I think that's also why I have such a, I don't want to say disdain, but such a, uh, it doesn't resonate with me when people are like, like Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. I just kind of roll my eyes, like nobody can make like a million dollars during four hours. And they're usually based on the fact that you need to outsource all this work that you don't feel like doing. And not that I'm against like, you know, housekeeper, obviously I order food all the time because I don't like cooking. Um, but I think that when you get into this mindset where like you can do get something for nothing, it's kind of like the same people who are addicted to gambling, right? They like love playing the lottery. They like just get this, what I call lottery lazies. And they just feel like, um, you know, if they're working hard, then they're doing it wrong. And that's, I don't think the case at all. I think sometimes hard work is good and it helps you. And it also helps you like physically and mentally as well, just to keep busy and keep doing things. So like, I remember my aunt, when I was little, we'd watch TV and she always felt like TV was a waste of time. So I know how to knit and crochet and needlepoint and all those things, because that's all she did. Like whenever we watch TV, she would always be knitting or crocheting or something. And she felt like then she wasn't I guess being, what's the word, idle or wasting time. So it's always just good to have activities. So let me check in because I know that was a lot of chat, chat, shitter, chatter about random stuff. Um, Donna definitely pants said that. Uh, Tammy, definitely going to check out your book, Sasha. Love the genre. Good. Sharice, I'm a certified PNP and I'm worried to break everything down. It is a special skill. Cool. Um, and it's a certified project manager, in case you're wondering. Um, Susan Fox uh, and Kiewitz, happy human principles in the house. I can so relate. Cool. Uh, Donna, me all the time. How is it afternoon already when I cut up at seven, right? Like sometimes I'm like honestly surprised. Uh, Capagnato PR by Edith, Edith Tapia. I am the same. Awesome. Jade, oh yes, my husband doesn't like to plan either. It's so frustrating. Uh, Cherise, planning helps me feel somewhat in control. There's so much I can't control. Yes, totally. Chrissy, I'm a perceiver on the Myers-Briggs and I'm, if I'm totally honest, I love a totally unplanned day. <laughs> oh, Chrissy. That being said, planning dinner in advance is always a good thing if I remember to do it. Um, Donna, team overthinker right here. Yes, I totally overthink things. Um, Jade, I never watch TV without crafting. Yeah, I don't know. I love doing that too. Like I have like needles and like crocheting things next to me when I am watching TV. And I don't even know, honestly, that it is going to make anything. Like I'm not looking at patterns. I mostly just make honestly scarves and blankets because they are rectangles and they are square. So it doesn't really require a lot of thinking, but I like enjoy doing that with my hands. Um, Donna, Tim might work four hours, but he pays others to do the other 12 hours. Yeah, I don't even know what Tim is doing. I don't even get him, which is just someone who I know people love him. I know Ben loved him when we first met. And I was like, look, I do not like Tim Ferris. I don't want to hear anything about him because he's like on his mailing list. And he used to like forward me his emails. I'm like, I don't want those. I don't. So, all right, let's go back to our solution. All right, so here's what I want you to do. Now, if you have your paper and your pen or your iPad, make sure to create a bunch of annual lists. Like here's what I did. So I have about 11 lists. So like overarching buckets of lists that you could create. And this is more just like a catalog of what you should work on each month. So what should happen is based on your wish, your wish list, each month when you go to sit down to plan things out, you should say, okay, let me go back to my wish list of all the things that I kind of thought, hey, I want to accomplish this year or I want to make sure I get to. And I'm just going to kind of pick and choose from each of those lists. I'm going to knock them out. I'm going to put five things on for January. Then next month in February, you can say, okay, well, I really didn't get to this thing. So I will just move it from January to February. Or you can say, you know what, what happens a lot of times with me is I think I want to do something but I really don't. There was, um, what was the course I signed up for? Uh, Procreate. So I thought I wanted to be like this iPad ninja where I was like, I can draw anything on the iPad. First of all, I can't draw or illustrate. I have zero 
talent and illustration, but I was super excited about doing that. And so I purchased all these courses, right? And really when it comes down to it, I'm not truly interested in that. And I don't have any deep desire to want to do it. So you could also say, you know what? I tried to make this happen this month, but it didn't happen. And it really wasn't because of lack of time. It was because of lack of interest. And that's okay too. So, you know, just cross things off as well because they're just not that important to you. Um, and sometimes you can put things on here too, where you're like, I might be interested in it or I might not. I'll show you things that I'm kind of pseudo interested in. Um, and then also you can add more to this and don't try, like I said, don't try to put yourself into silos. Like don't try to limit yourself. Just put whatever comes to mind. This is like it said, a dream wish list of things that you think you want to do. Um, so, you know, especially I know if you guys have children ever or have ever babysat, I know I always hear this from kids. I'm bored. Like they just don't know what to do. And so this will never, ever happen to you because you have your own catalog of things that you can do. Um, and again, there's no rules to this. Like, don't worry, like my activity is too small or my activity is too big. Like it could be something simple. Like I want to change the light bulbs in my house, right? Like I just don't like the incandescent floor, fluorescence and I would like to have the warm, I don't even know what other kind of, like the warm, uh, you know, efficient, environment friendly ones, right? It, just put whatever you feel like, it doesn't matter. Also, these are just my favorite cupcakes, which are from Magnolia Bakery, which if you ever watched uh, Sex in the City, this is the famous bakery that everyone liked to go to. But if you ever make it to New York, total side note, don't just forget about the cupcakes. What's totally worth having there are the cheesecakes, which I know you're like, I but I like the cheesecake. These cheesecakes are amazing. They're like thick. Uh, they taste good, but they're not overly sweet. Um, and they're just magical. The crumb, like the, the cram cracker crust is just perfect. There's not too much butter. There's not too much flakiness. Anyways, that is all I'm going to say. I don't, I cannot have these because Magnolia Baker is not in San Diego and they don't ship out cheesecakes because <laughs> they're just, they're fragile. So they can only last for so long. But I used to work, well, I used to live in New York for years, but Rockefeller Center in the basement had a Magnolia Bakery, which was kind of like their hidden uh, Magnolia Bakery site. Because most Magnolia Bakeries are like, so packed you can't get in so this was like my secret magnolia bakery place and i would go there quite often anyways moving on <laughs> so here's my list i'm just going to share with you my list for learning and again hopefully it like sparks some ideas for you or you kind of get a sense of what i was thinking when i put the term learning down but i would really like to learn how to do illustrations specifically the illustration that you see on the left so someone did this for me i think it was I'm going to say 380, but I think honestly it was probably 475. It's so beautiful. So I was like, you know what? I could probably learn how to do this. I know how to use Photoshop. That is a thousand percent not true. I cannot learn how to do this. This was really tough. And so I bought some Photoshop painting classes because again, doing it on the computer with Procreate just didn't work for me. Um, and also hair painting. So every time you see those urban fantasy covers for books, the hair is like out of control, amazing. And it's one of those things where you're like, why can't my hair do that in real life? Maybe I should just carry a fan with me everywhere I go. But they, uh, for sure, this was not the hair on the model that I chose when I asked her to create this. So. All of this is like a skill that you can learn. So that's like something I'm going to do. Facebook ads, I always brag all the time about how I don't need to do any paid ads in order to get people here into Pretty Fabulous or to buy my courses or anything else. That is not the same with books. <laughs> no one is discovering me. No one's like, this is the greatest book ever. I need to do paid ads. So on my list for the year is learning how to do all these paid ads. And if you guys didn't know this, Hulu is now allowing people, like anybody who wants, like regular consumers, to do ads on the Hulu platform. I know, crazy, right? So go to Hulu, sign up as a, um, I think it's called an ad partner or something like that. Go to Hulu, sign up as an ad partner, and then you can start creating your own ads for Hulu. I've signed up, I have not done anything, but that's something I plan to do in the future. Um, so web design, again, like I said, I really need to learn my own CSS because I broke a website page the other day. In fact, I broke, 
the Planner Academy sales page because I was trying to do CSS. I had taken a course. I, I don't know what the problem is. I'm just not able to learn it. So maybe I just need another class. But having to rely on web developers all the time, every time I make a change, is like killing me. It's like I can't get anything done. Um, craft classes. I just love taking craft classes. Again, I just want to write better. Illustrator, I'd like to create vectorized art. So in theory, I could take some art and just vectorize it into cartoons, but I don't know how. I don't know how to use the trace feature, pen tool, like nothing. I tried watching just some YouTube tutorials, which I'm sure is how you found me. And they were like, okay, take out the trace tool. I'm like, what is a trace tool? What does that do, right? Um, I will try not to go that much into detail and all these, it'll take us forever to get through this. Um, tools, so I have also, I am so guilty of this. I don't know if anybody else is. I also give in to deadlines. So the tools that I've purchased, I like have not used. I'm like literally paying for so this is like a small subset of many tools that I purchased that I'm just not using. So Samcart, Thrivecart, I have a lifetime license for Thrivecart. I think I've used it twice. Um, Convert, same thing. I think it's almost the year's almost up, and I don't think I've ever used it more than twice. Um, Provely. Same thing, I'm still using Proof, uh, which I don't know if you know this, Proof is the one that when you go to my website, it will show, uh, you know, Sasha just bought a course, Jennifer just bought a course, right? But Proofly is a one-time license access fee, but I haven't figured out how to use it. So it's something like I have to figure out how to do. Courses I purchased. So honestly, there's a ton of courses I purchased that I'm not using, but these are the ones that I would like to learn for just this year, um, especially VSM3, uh, which stands for Virtual Summit Mastery, I think. Um, yeah, I don't even know what the acronym stands for, but I think Virtual Summits are going to be really huge. I haven't even gone through, it's like a $3,000 course. I haven't even gone through anything past except lesson one. Um, so that is also on the list of things that I want to do. So tons of learning things. So don't worry if like, it can be something old that you just need to learn for this year. Um, and I didn't really put a lot of personal things in there because I'm mostly like focused on tech and just those kind of learning things. Um, so the second list is creating. What are some things that you would like to create? I would love to create card deck templates, but again, that kind of ties back, and these can all be interrelated, right? So the card deck templates are really tied back into learning how to do illustrations and Photoshop painting. Um, and so I'd like to create Oracle decks, tarot decks, mo like I want to create all these cool things because I really think card decks are fun and I think you could make a lot of money off of them and I don't think a lot of people are doing them. So I'd love to create some templates for people to get out there and start editing and start using on their own. Fonts. I have purchased a font course and I have not actually finished it. Same thing. I haven't, like I know exactly what I want to do. I love doing words like calligraphy. I just have to figure out how to turn that into a font and start selling it. Um, Pop-up shop templates. I want to do those next year. Um, new templates. I have a secret project. So if you stick around to the end, I will tell you what that secret project is. Um, workbooks. I actually have, I can't even tell to talk about it because it's not my project, but I'm collaborating with somebody else to make a set of workbooks that I haven't even started. And we were supposed to make, or I was supposed to make them for back in September and it is now December and I have not. So I am really behind on that. Uh, so that's my creation list. Um, this is my achieving list. So to me, these kind of sound like goals. So when I say like there are some things that I'm not totally married to, this is one of those things where like, I hope with a lot of hard work and effort that it will happen. But if it doesn't, I'm okay with that too. Um, so like this year with one of the box sets I was in, I hit the USA Today bestseller status. That was very exciting. That was never a goal. That was never something I intended. It was just kind of like one of those things where I was in the right place at the right time. But honestly, I was only in the right place at the right time because I had worked really hard and I put a lot of effort in and I was invited in. Now, I feel like that is a better way to go about achieving something than like if I had set out for the year to like be like, I really want to be uh, this one status. I feel like I would have caused myself one, a lot of anxiety, like worrying about not making it every month. Um, and also just sort of feeling like a failure for not making it every month and then kind of discouraging myself. So that's kind of sometimes how I think about these like achievement status goals. 
Um, YouTube, I would love to have 50,000 subscribers. I think I'm at 30 right now. Um, and I'm at two, almost at 2 million views. So I'd love to get up to 3 million views next year. And so this is really more though about YouTube for me, it's just about providing more value. And if I can provide more value, then I will get more subscribers and I will get more views. And if I'm not, it's more just kind of a barometer to say, hey, you should probably pick things up a little and try to add more value on your channel because it is a free outlet and you're not doing that. So this number four is purchasing. And as you may or may not know, I'm a minimalist. So I'm not really into buying things. So if I was gonna say I was gonna buy anything, it would be to buy my own house, but only, not because I really want a house, but only because I want a puppy. <laughs> I, really, I think they're so cute. These are Dobermans. Um, on the left, you have a little blue Doberman. He kind of looks like a Weimaraner. And on the right, you have chocolate Dobermans. So that's really like what I want. Like if you said, what do you want to purchase? It's really just a house that can have a dog. I really don't want any more things. Like I don't want to buy jewelry. I don't want any clothes. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it on my purchase list and not judging you if you want things at all. Like just saying that's the only thing that I have. And after this one, we'll take a little break and I'll, I'll check in with you guys. Um, so this is number five. This is finishing. These are things that I would like to say I finished this year. Um, so for some people, it could be like, I want to finish a marathon or I want to write or whatever. I want to finish seven different books, which I know is a lot. So this year I was only able to finish three and a half books. So is that right? Yeah, three and a half. And that was starting, I think, in May. So this would be much more aggressive. So this is something I very, very much want. Like if you ask me of all these lists, this is probably like my number one. Um, so I'd like to finish the last three books in my series. I'd like to create a book to go out on submission. And I'd like to start a new series in PWF, which I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Paranormal Women's Fiction, which is just like magical like worlds with women that are 40 plus because I'm 46. So I feel like I can kind of relate. And so they are mysteries, they're romance, or sometimes they're just meanderings like women's fiction. So that's what I would like to do. I will check in with you guys. Let's see, where are we at? Um, cupcakes. Talking about cupcakes. Yay. <laughs> uh, Donna. Oh my God. I did exactly that with P.O. Procreate and I can't draw either. Yeah. It seems like I see those YouTube videos or even the Instagram videos and everyone's doing an amazing job. And I'm like, I want to do magical things like that too. They make it look so easy. Um, Cherise Mangolia cupcakes are great. Yeah, they are. The, the cheesecakes are way better. Chrissy, I like this idea. I'm going to have my kids make a wish list. Cool. Also, I bought Crocreate for my 13 year old and have her teach me how to use it. Yeah, it's always good to have children to help you with technology. Look in SAS cupcakes. Okay. Uh, Donna, now I want cheesecake, right? Cheesecake is so yummy. And I did buy the, they had a coupon. I think you can still get it today. I bought $50, I think it was just $25 in gift cards from the Cheesecake Factory. And when you do, you get two uh, cheesecakes for free, like two slices for free. Like you can use them starting in January. So yeah, because I feel like for sure I will use those. <laughs> uh, Rory, I've never been to New York. I'm sure they're amazing. Yes, they are. Uh, Sharice, there's a Magnolia in DC as well. Oh yeah. You know, DC is like the new New York. Like I was working in DC right before, um, right after Cushman and after New York. And I was flying in like every week and take or taking the train down to Union Station. Like DC is like, first of all, it's really hard with the traffic, but they have so many cool things that are coming to DC. It's almost like I'm in New York whenever I'm there. There's like nothing I ever like. Like they even have a Le Pan is my favorite bakery um they have this amazing chocolate that just comes out as melted chocolate that they pour into the milk anyways uh Rory I live in Canada oh <laughs> Chrissy Sharice where in DC my parents are in suburban Maryland and it sounds like a cool gift uh Sharice Mariah Carey has a diva fan with her at all times yeah <laughs> uh Janice I can't wait to visit New York City again I love the cheesecake at Junior's yeah Junior's has good cheesecake you know I bought if you buy the Junior's Cheesecake Cookbook, 
I was actually able to make cook cheesecake at home using those recipes and they tasted exactly the same. Um, which sometimes, you know, when you buy those recipe books, like I bought CPK's recipe book and the melting pot did not taste the same. So, but Junior's cheesecakes, uh, the recipes tasted the same. Sharice, Union Station, I'm in Maryland too. Yeah, Union Station has everything. They have Shake Shack, um, which is pretty much the only place I went to when I was there, I was always good to Shake Shack. They did not have um, Magnolia Bakery when I was there though. Otherwise I totally would have went. Leah, order Magnolia Bakery from Gold Belly. Yeah, they only allow you to order the cupcakes. You can't get the, uh, the cheesecakes. So sad, and they offer banana pudding, which who wants banana pudding? <laughs> Cherise, you need a trace light for vector images. My daughter Autumn makes amazing vector portraits. Shameless plug, Autumn Joy Williams on Instagram. No problem. Uh, Chrissy, I took an illustrative course through community college. It takes quite a bit of time. Yeah, it's like so different than Photoshop or InDesign. It's way harder. Jade, oh my gosh, me too. I have so many classes I bought and I use. You're making me feel a little less guilty that I'm not the only one. Yeah, I buy so many that I like have a stockpile of them. Uh, Sasha, congratulations. Uh, thanks. Uh, congratulations to me, you have a bestseller. Um, Donna, I just recovered from a Udemy addiction. I am self banned from buying another course till I finish the ones that I still want to do. It's so hard because Udemy, the classes are so cheap and they like know when you're thinking about pulling away, they're like, hey, this class is only $9.99. And then when you don't buy it, they're like, hey, this class is only $5.99. And you're like, okay, well, I was going to spend that much or probably more at Starbucks anyway. I might as well just buy a course, right? Um, so I totally get the Udemy addiction. Laura, congrats, that's awesome. Thank you guys. Donna, congrats on the books. Thanks, you guys are so nice. Jana, are you going to come back to Lisa Latte and make more videos? I love your cozy mystery videos so much. I am never coming back to help authors. And I mean that in the nicest way. There is just only so much I can do. And so making videos for Lisa London to help romance authors and making videos for Lisa Latte to help, help cozy mystery authors took up a lot of time. And honestly, it was only when I stopped making videos that I started writing books. Um, so I will never go back to making videos except Courtney and I, uh, who's protagonist on YouTube, have the Cozy Escape Book Club. And that is so low maintenance. We just do one book every month where we just have a book club discussion and it's live. So I won't be going back. <laughs> uh, Sharice, are the books digital only? No, they have paper. They're, they're all available in paperback. Ashley, uh, the last few slides have had my daughter chatting up a storm because of the animals. Aw, see, it sounds like you should get a Doberman as well. Aren't they cute? They are so adorable. <laughs> uh, Chrissy, oh, women over 40 fiction. Nice. I went through a paranormal romance phase, but I want something different now. Cool. Um, Donna, I am getting into minimalism, which is difficult in a family of eight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I would think with a family of eight, you don't even have room to have things. Um, I'm totally loving it. My goal is to not buy one single course this year, but to get through some of the other ones I have. Info hoarder here. Yeah, me too. I think it's okay too to say like, I tried out a course that I thought I might like. One thing, sometimes the course just isn't that good. Like not all courses are created equally. Or two, you can just say, you know what? I'm glad that I tried that but I'm just not interested in that either. So it's like, I have a bunch of courses that are like that too. Or I'm wondering, sometimes I wonder if like someone knows some se special secret that I don't <laughs> and sometimes, and they don't sometimes, which I don't know if that, it sounds weird that it like helps bolster my confidence where I'm like, okay, nobody knows the super secret to whatever. It's okay. Everyone's just working really hard and trying. Uh, Donna, Rory, me too in Canada. Yay, Canada. Uh, Chrissy, DC Beltway traffic is way worse than San Diego. Yeah, because DC is older and the roads are sometimes smaller. And yeah, I've been stuck sometimes. I've actually missed my flight sometimes in DC because I just couldn't get to the airport, even though I had allocated like two hours to get there. Uh, Donna, yes, juniors. Oh my God, they have a cookbook. Yeah, they have they have a cookbook. I have it still here at home. It's thin. It's I love it. It's totally uh, worth buying. Sasha, my husband got me a low carb cheesecake from Junior's for Christmas. They shipped it to Texas. He did good. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, I love, like, everybody loves Junior's in New York. Uh, Janice, oh my gosh, there's a Junior's cookbook. <laughs> uh, Donna, happy new year from Australia. We're into January already. It's so good. Awesome. Uh, Sharice, I made a goal not to buy any courses in 21. <laughs> Lisa, don't tempt me with fabulous stuff. Uh, Rory, feel with those Udemy courses. 
<laughs> yeah, they're so cheap. Teresa's Creative Studio. Lisa, I purchased your course without about planning on Udemy. I did finish your course. Thank you. Cool. Awesome. All right. So let's go back into our list. So hopefully it's like helping you to think things or it's helping you to decide to get a puppy for your house. <laughs> All right, so my next thing is eliminating. So I know a lot of people, I see this all the time, like eliminating negative, toxic friends, and I've actually done that. I'm like good there. So it took me a long time, um, and you never know. Like some people just come into your life, you think they're going to be helpful, and maybe they just don't fit, and that's all right too. Um, but I would really like to quit sugar. And this has been like an, when I say I'm like committed, I put down 80-20, because obviously I'm not that committed. I still love cheesecake and cookies. But I would like to do like 80% where I'm not doing sugar, and only 20% where I am. Um, I've tried the no sugar. I do not like the taste of stevia or stevia or whatever it is. This woman, Sarah Wilson, actually sold her website, I Quit Sugar. It was so successful to this fitness guy. Um, but she just talks about how she obviously give it, she just lives totally sugar free. Um, I do believe it's like an addiction. Like I remember in, um, like I'm not addicted to cigarettes or gambling or anything like that. But I remember one day in high school, Mr. Supposey, who was my favorite teacher in the whole world, had said to us, you're all addicted to pop. And I was like, or Coke or whatever. I don't know what you call it, depending on where you are in the country. Um, but basically just caffeinated uh, soda drinks. And I was like, no, I'm not. So I remember waking up the very next day and just not drinking any more soda forever. And I was totally fine. And then, and I think when I was around 31, 32, I woke up one day and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stop drinking alcohol. It doesn't really taste that great. I feel like I have the flu all the time the next day. I'm missing a lot of classes. Like I was teaching aerobics and I was missing the 5 a.m. and the 6 a.m. because I was just sleeping through it. I don't know what it is. There was something about hitting 30 where I just didn't bounce back like I did in my 20s. And so alcohol just wasn't the same. I wasn't metabolizing it as quickly. And so I was like, I'm just going to quit. And I totally quit and I've never missed it. So it's really weird because sugar, I always thought like I am like addict free, but I think I might be addicted to sugar. Like the thought of not eating sugar ever again for the rest of my life, like this girl, Sarah Wilson, kind of makes me a little sad. I'm like, oh my God, I can't not, not be without sugar. I mean, I can definitely cut it down. So I definitely have a sugar addiction. So I don't know what my point was with that story, but that's something like, that's the only thing I'm really trying to eliminate for uh, thinking about eliminating. Experiencing, I would love to go to a writer's conference again. Um, it's how I met Sasha. Uh, it's how I met a lot of really great people. And I know that everyone's doing virtual summits and we're chatting here live. And honestly, even though it's really great to do that, it's still just not the same as doing in-person things. And I miss just hanging out, right? And like, I think, I remember, this is like years ago when I saw Sasha, I forced her to go out for ice cream, right? Because I have an ice cream addiction, but I really just like sometimes hanging out and doing nothing. And I feel like sometimes, well, I don't feel like, like for sure when you're online, you can't really hang out and do nothing because you're online to talk about something. And I've had this a lot with friends like zoom and everything you're trying to like maximize every minute of visiting time online and it's not the same as just hanging out in your house and i don't know the time just passes and it's okay that we're not talking for every second of every day um and i do miss that so if that is the case where we can meet up again in person i do plan to try to go to some writers conferences this year if conditions improve but We'll see. Again, this is why it's on the wish list. Who knows if it'll happen or if it'll not happen. So, um, and meeting more mystery writers. So there's an, another girl that I write with and we're going to start a PWF, a paranormal women's fiction writers group on Facebook, just to meet more people in like the genre that we're writing. So I have a ton of romance friends and for whatever reason, mystery people don't get together like romance writers do. And I don't know why that is. Um, we're still all women, but they just seem to be more siloed for some reason. Um, so that's what I would like to do as well. Uh, visiting. And this is, I put a note here, this is really not a high priority for me at all. Like this is one of those things where if it works out, if I have time, because like I said, my number one goal for this year, I can't just recall, my number one priority for this year is really finishing all those books and finishing all those books when you travel or you're doing lots of social activities doesn't happen. And it's quite possible that because of COVID, uh, I did write more books last year because there was less socializing and less traveling and everything else. So um, these are places I would like to go, but 
If I don't, I'm not worried about them at all if they go on to next year. Um, this is, and just so you know, we're on slide 36 of 105. So we're going to be here together another hour. Um, but number 10 is reading. I would like to read more. And right now I am not, like I have all these things on my Kindle and you know, you get 10 books and sometimes like there's some things that have been there for a year and library loans. So I'm still a member of the New York public library, which if you can get a membership there, you definitely should. Their ebook collection is massive. I think larger than everyone else's, but sometimes books, you get 21 days, the, the book will come and go. And I still haven't, won't have read that book and you can't renew electronic books online. They just go back and then you have to go back in the queue and wait again. Um, so yeah. So, but I just want to read all types of books, not just the kind of books that I write. I mean, the whole reason I became a writer is one, because I love Janet Ivanovich, but also because I just love reading. And I feel like I'm just not reading a lot because I'm just not taking the time or making it a priority to do so. So, yeah. So let's talk about anchor dates, but let me just check in really quick with you guys and see if I missed any chat about cupcakes. <laughs> I'm kidding. About anything. Um, Janice, I just had mud cake today, a mud cake today. It's so hard. Yeah. I really think sugar is an addiction. I've never thought about that as being an addiction. Um, Janice, are you from the Midwest? I am from the Midwest. I'm from the cornfields of Illinois in a tiny town called Kankakee. <laughs> Kankakee, I think is a Indian, like a native Indian, American Indian word. Um, or I guess it's just native American without the word Indian. <laughs> But uh, Jay, quitting sugar is on my list too. I quit alcohol this past year and sugar feels like the same craving I used to get. I agree, it's an addiction. Yeah, I just never missed anything. I never miss uh, pop and I never missed alcohol. Um, even breaking up with boyfriends. I never miss ex-boyfriends. <laughs> I only miss sugar. Ashley, my daily mantra, be brave enough to suck at something new today. I am totally all about that, Ashley. I'm totally fine with failing publicly even. I don't even care. Um, Jana, I naturally quit e eating ice cream, cake, candy, cookies, etc. a couple months ago, and then Christmas came. <laughs> sweets are too much for me now. Aw. Yeah, once you stop, like, all of a sudden things taste too sweet, like, as soon as you get used to, like, not doing it. Sharice, I'm addicted. If it's a life without cupcakes, uh, a life without cupcakes is not a life I want to live. <laughs> No, right? Like, I think I need to do 20%. I don't think I can ever go cold turkey. Uh, Donna, yes, pop, soda, cola, whatever is addictive, likely due to the sugar. Yeah, it's so weird, though, because you'd think, like, I'd be addicted. I would still want pop, but I just never – I guess liquids just aren't really my thing. I could drink water forever and never – worry about ever drinking anything else. In fact, even when I eat dinner, I can only have water with it. Like having any other drink with it is like too much for me. Donna, I miss conferences and miss that vibe. Yeah, it's totally different when you're with people. Yes, just hanging, miss just hanging out too. Um, Donna, mystery people are mysterious. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Chrissy, what are some other PW offers? You know, there. if you go to peril, paranormalwomensfiction.net, there's this group of authors that are, there's 13, and they call themselves the Fab 13, and they started this subgenre, and they're all doing really well. Like, their books are, like, doing amazing in sales, and everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, a lot of people are copying that same subgenre, which I think they're okay with. Um, but there's the regular mystery authors or paranormal authors or urban fantasy authors, and they just happen to be writing one. I think right now I'm reading Annabelle Chase's book. But before that, I had read Christine Zane's book. Uh, Janet DeLeon had a book. Um, K.F. Breen had a book. I mean, pretty much everything K.F. Breen just turns to gold. I don't even know. <laughs> she like sells so much, so many books. Lisa, I have like three books started and would love to finish just one of them, but life gets in the way, right? Like you're like, I'm a reader, but am I a reader? Because I'm not really reading. Uh, Lisa, it is better to listen to Janet Ivanovich. Oh, yeah. I I love reading books, so I can't really, I tried listening. I never really finished them. I don't know why. Sometimes it depends on the narrator too. Some of the narrators are like, eh. Um, Oops, Ivana's just audio because the voices are hysterical. Love her books. Yeah, love her books. Janice, I'm from Chicago. Awesome. Yeah, I lived in Chicago for many years. All, if I could, like mostly cozies are based out of small towns, but if I could, all of my books are really based on Chicago. Like just only write books based in Chicago. 
There are a lot of cornfields in Illinois. There are. Uh, Jason, so what does this mean? I shouldn't be stuffing my mouth with cookies, right? Because I gave up on cokes 12 years ago. I haven't looked back. No, I'm not saying that at all. You should do whatever you want. Uh, Chrissy, I started with no sugar in my coffee and now all Starbucks drinks I request are with a third of the syrup, too sweet otherwise. Yeah, you can ask them to do like a half pump or one pump or whatever it is or low pump. Uh, Sharice, uh, looking at your course on Udemy, it's nine bucks. Do I need it? You don't need it, Sharice. You already have it. It's Planner 101 in InDesign. You already have those courses, so don't buy them. You have them for free. <laughs> like they're already, I know you're, what courses you're enrolled in. So hopefully I answered that question before you bought it. <laughs> but let's go back to step two. Okay, here's kind of what I do when I think about planning out anchor dates, like things that are hard deadlines or things that I kind of think I want to do, I take one of these annual at a glance. And it doesn't have to be the Erin Condren one. It can be anything. But basically, I just have the whole year laid out, but not indeed, like where I can just see it all in one page. And then I actually plot in things that I think I want to do that month. And I can move them around, right? Like I have the freedom to do that. But for the pop-up shop planners, and we'll I'll talk about this in a minute, I'm not going to do voting anymore because I can't stand the ambiguity of not knowing what I'm going to do. So I planned it out. So these are all of the pop-up shop planners that I want to create this year and the months in which I think I want to roll them out, right? So then I can see everything at a glance. The other thing that I do too, because I do like to write things down, is I will take one of these sugar paper monthly planners and I will just plan, like plot things in here on dates that I have. Do I have any dates in here? I do have dates in here. So like for February, for classes I'm taking, um, for writing deadlines. And yes, what inevitably happens is that after a week, after I've written everything in ink, it's all wrong. <laughs> right? But at least like, I don't know how to explain it, but the process of planning out the year, like plotting different dates in, helps me even though I know that they change. So instead, um, so what I do is I do have multiples of these different planners laying around, but I also have Google Calendar. And so inside Google Calendar, I have all different calendars. I have a writing calendar, a pretty fabulous calendar, a YouTube schedule calendar, and that also helps to keep me organized and I can just easily, more easily move things around. So usually what happens is I will get excited about writing dates down and then I will just simply switch over to the Google Calendar. Then I'll get excited about writing dates like I go back and forth. So I don't even know if that helps. But my big anchor dates are I want to launch Planner Academy in January, which is this month. Um, I have an ARC date in February. So ARC dates are advanced reader copies. And that is like a hard date that I've scheduled to hidden gems. So I can't miss that. Also, I have a secret course that I want to launch in April. Again, that might change to July. I will tell you what that secret course is at the end. Uh, and then April, I also have a developmental edit slot that I paid like gobs of money for, like thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, I have to make that debt, like that's a hard deadline. Um, and then I have a cover design, like I picked out cover designers and you have to book those people out like way in advance. So I have one slot for April and then I have another slot for July. So I like have to be ready to go for those. And then in September, I'd like to launch Planner Academy again a second time. So those are, again, these are guesstimates. Who knows what will really happen? Um, but just, I know a lot of people, I don't know if anyone else has this experience. I cannot stand Trello. So moving things around in Google Calendar, one, it's free. Two, it's very easy. But Trello is like, I honestly don't think you need a system like this unless you have a team of people that you need to coordinate with and check on their progress. And even then, it's just, it's, it's so much work. Like I would waste literally weeks trying to make my Trello boards perfect or look inside, make them look nice with like graphics and like icons. And all of a sudden at the end of the day, I got nothing done, but I had this really pretty Trello board. So I would just worry about anybody who's out there teaching you how to automate and do systems because they're probably going to teach you how to use Trello or ClickUp or Asana. And I honestly think those are a huge waste of time. And more importantly, they're going to tell you to outsource. And, you know, I made, I was, I'm going to say half the income I make now when I outsource to tons of people, because it takes a lot of time. And I say this all the time. If you've never had direct reports in corporate America or, you know, in your business, it sounds very glamorous. Like I'm such a baller. I have 20 people reporting to me, right? I have a graphic designer. I have my own copy editor. 
But all of those people need direction. They need guidance. They need leadership. They need feedback. They need to be checked on. You are the accountability person. Um, this is a lot of work. And so I wasted all of this time because I had like probably at my last job, maybe 40 direct reports between the, my reports and then the reports underneath them. And I would spend 90% of my day just managing people. And then obviously it was New York, so it was totally normal to work till midnight. And then at night at like 4.30, once everybody went home for the day, then I would finally get my own work done. And then the cycle would start again the next day. People have questions. They need clarification. Um, they need to know how to, if they're doing things correctly or incorrectly, you need to show them what the final product should be and you need to introduce them to other people. So again, I really just think it's more a vanity thing to say I'm gonna automate and you know outsource everything. And I, my income has doubled. Um, and this will be the second year in a row that I've had six figures without anybody on staff, without any help, without any employees. And honestly, it like I have more time. I have more time to do things because I have less people helping, um, which I know sounds counterintuitive. Instead, I get help on things like I don't like cooking. I order in all of my food. I order takeout 100%. I don't really like cleaning. Like I do the minimal, but for the most part, we have a maid now. So, you know, just something to think about because um, I think it's like if I had to complain about the number one pet peeve I have for this industry, the like starting an online business, that would be it. Because I gave into the hype too, where I was like, oh my God, that is so awesome. That's like, I want to be that. I want to be my own CEO. And um, yeah, I think it's kind of silly. So let me check in and see what you guys are doing. Oh, whoops. Left that on. Uh, Sharice, love the cozy mystery genre, especially grabbing a whole series and reading one after the other. Yes, it's true. Sometimes people won't read your books too unless you have multiples out. So that's why I'm trying to get as many as possible. Sharice, use erasable gel pens. I don't like those, Sharice. I like the pretty pens. <laughs> that's really the problem. I like my pretty colored pens, uh, the liquid ink ones. Uh, Sharice, I really loathe Trello. Uh, Anna, are these slides available anywhere? They are not. Um, but I can make them available if you guys if you guys want them. Um, I'm happy to. Uh, Camille agreed. I tried Trello and it didn't do for me. I completely forgot I even have it. <laughs> yeah, right. Who needs Trello? Donna, yeah, I'm pretty sure no one's annual plan for this year included a pandemic lockdown. Got to be flexible. Yes. Angela, too many people to manage. Yep. Uh, Jade, congrats on setting up your business. All the facets. Thanks. Uh, uh, Edith Tapia. Looking forward to your secret course, yeah. Uh, Angela, I only outsource what I can, absolutely can't do that task because I don't have the skills to do it. Yeah, like when I say outsource, I do still like send quick things to Fiverr. And when I say quick, I mean like maybe the most I'm paying is $45 for a service, but then it's done and it's over with. Um, Ashley, there are three of us in my portion of our job and trying to keep organizing and beauty. Communicating is so hard when it's really one-sided. Yeah, they've done all these like, uh, studies where they're like, the more people you have, the less efficient you are. Like, I remember all I did all day was have meetings, like meeting after meeting. And the more meetings you have, like the more stress it causes and the more you just kind of, you get more work every time you go to a meeting, like nothing ever really gets done. Um, I remember I was in charge of, right when I left Cushman, I was in charge of global payroll for like, I think it was like 22 different countries. And it was awful. It was like a nightmare. So I was so excited. I took it because I was able to work from home and I just wanted to be with my dog. And I was like, oh, I just want to be with luck or happy and we can hang out all the time. But we couldn't hang out all the time because I had to have conference calls at 4 a.m. with Greece and then another call at 2 a.m. with India. Like it just never ended. It was like a never ending cycle of meetings. But Sharice, I don't like clear erasable pens either. Chrissy, yes, please, on providing the slides. Okay, cool. All right, so these are mostly my like things I wanna do, but totally fine if you wanna see them, if they're helpful. Okay, so monthly deadlines. Okay, so now what you're gonna do, now that you have everything done, you kind of locked out like those big things in your year, those anchor dates, now you're gonna try to make a wish, you're gonna take your wish list and plug in everything that you want to do for the month. So basically what I do is so I don't obviously color I just color coded it for you guys, but I broke it down into writing, courses, YouTube, webinars and personal. So 
you can move things around by the week. So don't worry that your monthly is set in stone because I used to worry about that too. And then I'd feel like a failure when I missed something. You can move things around and like I said, just move it to next month. But I know that I have to get out videos in purple three days a week. Then I know that I need to open up Planner 101 next Monday, um, open the cart for Planner Academy, do the five day challenge. Then on the 11th, right? I know, like, I think the only personal thing on here is uh, the first Wednesday of every month, Lauren and I go to brunch, but we aren't going to brunch because they're on lockdown again for California. So I can obviously delete that. Um, Camila, uh, her birthday is on Saturday. We were going to go to. Um, where were we going to go? We were going to go to the wine country, Napa. Could I forget to bring Napa? We're going to go to Napa for her birthday. So obviously that's not happening, um, but I don't know what she wants to do. So not a lot of, per like I said, not a lot of personal things. Um, webinars, I really love doing no sales, no pitch webinars. Um, so it's definitely something I want to do. So I kind of put it towards the end of the month. Uh, the January pop-up shop, I'm going to try to roll that out on the 25th. Um, I have mystery classes starting on the 25th. So this way I kind of know what's going on and what my dates are, right? So again, very loose. You're trying to be flexible and plan for things that might change. Um, then you're going to list out all your project deliverables. Now, this list, just so you know, is like massive. <laughs> so that's why I say like, just go with a grain of salt. Like maybe you'll get a lot of things done. Maybe you won't. Um, I know for Planner Academy, let's just take one. I have to do the sales page, which I've told you I totally messed up because I don't know how to use CSS. Uh, I have to write the emails that go out with that. I have to create mock-ups of all the things that are in the course. Um, I haven't even put the bonuses together. Um, webinar, I need to do a webinar and put the slides together. So there's a lot of things that go into every single just individual item you see on there. That's why you could just be flexible and say, I might have to move stuff. I kind of know what I need to do for Planner 101. The pop-up shop, I have 13,000 words due. I have a Harlequin video due, um, a webinar. Again, I'm going to have to, I'm going to talk about niching. Um, then I have another 13,000. Is that, I think that's a typo. Um, that's a typo. And then YouTube, I want to plan out, I need to plan out all the content, script it, film it, edit it, like all those things. Lead magnets go with some of those YouTube videos. Uh, Paranormal One Fiction Series, I need to plan out that series arc because I do have a consult with someone to talk about the uh, the plot and the series overall, so I have to get that done. Um, book number three is releasing. I just have to finish off the last couple rounds of edits and proof proofreading. So all of this are kind of like my list of deliverables. So it just kind of helps you think about, I, and I say deliverables because you want to think about not the individual, like you kind of know the tasks you need to do. And honestly, I think it wastes more time listing out the tasks on a monthly basis. You can do that on a daily basis. But just what do I have to like get out there, like a physical thing or a digital thing to say that this is done? Um, and that's really what I mean by step number four. So step number five is creating weekly routines to support yourself. So when I say weekly routines, I, again, do, I like two things. I like being able to decide what I'm going to work on, like my to-do list that morning or the night before. But I also like having the same structure for the day. And again, this could be more of a personality thing. Like every day I have the same um, structure, Monday through Saturday. I always work out first. I know sometimes some writers will say, I want to write first. But to me, that seems like an awful idea. You're just going to wake up laying down all day to just sitting. Like, I don't, I just don't know that that's good for your health. So I like just getting up. Plus I like showering at the beginning of the day and then not worrying about my hair and makeup for the rest of the day. Um, I used to not do anything. I don't know how everyone's doing it at home, but when I first started working from home, I never did my hair and I never did my makeup and I didn't get as much done. And I know that sounds silly, but I think it's because I was still kind of like in pajama pants mode and I don't even own pajamas, but just kind of like, I didn't really take the day seriously. I kind of like screwed around every day was like three o'clock. I'm like, what have I done? Um, and I just wasn't organized. Right. So, or structured, I think is the word. So uh, for me having this kind of structure really helps. So I like to write in the morning, then after I shower, and then after lunch, I kind of shift gears and I start working on business stuff. Or sometimes I just keep writing, honestly. Um, for meals, because you do have to plan for meals, I feel like this wastes inordinate amounts of time, right? Like if you've ever been with a group of people or if you're dating someone, you're always like, what do you want for dinner? 
I don't know. What do you want for dinner? What are you hungry for? I don't know. I'm open. What are you hungry for? Why don't you name some things off and we'll veto it? Like it will go back and forth and I'll say chilies and Ben will say, oh, we just had chilies. Okay. Well, how about we get Thai food? Uh, I don't really want Thai food. I don't feel like it. Okay. Well, maybe Indian food. I don't like restaurants near you. <laughs> Google's trying to help me. Um, and so it goes back and forth. And then like literally sometimes 30 minutes or an hour will pass and we still haven't decided what we're going to eat for dinner. So I like to just kind of have it set. So in the mornings on the drive home back from the gym, I go through the drive through at Starbucks. That is breakfast. Um, for lunch, I just have whatever is leftover or whatever frozen meals in the freezer. And then for dinner, we just get carry out or delivery. And that does take like some time, sometimes like compromising with somebody else. But Otherwise, that's kind of my day. Um, Sundays are set for filming videos. I try to, it doesn't always happen, but in theory, that's kind of my structure. And like I said, I do some cleaning. So Ben's allergic to cats. So we have to change the sheets. And when I say we, it's really me. Uh, change the sheets, do all of the laundry every Saturday and every Wednesday. So it happens twice a week. Um, so I usually do that in the morning to try to like get it out of the way. And then on Sundays, really early, I will do my grocery shopping for the week. And it could be, it's usually minimal, like bread, maybe eggs, butter, things like that. Um, but for whatever reason, it seems like we have to go almost every week. So that is my, like, at least kind of a scaffolding for how the week will work. Um, otherwise, again, like, it's kind of like the dinner thing. If we don't plan out the dinner or what we're gonna eat, it's like you waste so much time just thinking about how you're going to do stuff. And then we get into your daily to-do list. So the daily to-do list is really like, I will review today's like today. This is my to-do list, right, for this morning. I wanted to review today's slides this morning. Um, I wanted to create the emails, which I think I only made one email. Um, so I still have to do a follow-up email after this, I have to write. I created that coupon code. Um, I have to finish edits on book number three and I have to start the planner 101 slide. So that's my to-do list just for today. Um, and then what I do is I do a minute by minute schedule forecast. So every minute is accounted for. So I wake up at 530 every morning. I wake, I go to the gym. 6 to 6, 6.45, I have my workout. 6.45 to 7.15 is about how long it takes me to do my Starbucks run. And these are more like larger estimates. And then 7.15, I shower, blow dry my hair, get ready for the day. And then 8 to 10, I'm going to review the slides. 10 to 11, I'm going to prep for the webinar. I had one webinar at 11 that I had a second. This is our second webinar right now at noon. Um, and then at 2 o'clock, I'll have some lunch. And then I'll start working on more stuff at 3 I have dinner at seven and then I'll read. And I also put that buffer in for dinner because because <laughs> there's two of us. It takes time to figure out what we're going to eat. It takes time to go pick it up and then eat and then clean up and all that stuff. So this way I don't give myself too much anxiety worrying about being behind schedule. I just build buffers and like that. And then from nine to 10, I go to bed and I read. So it's amazing how quickly the day will come and go. Because when you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I have the whole day. Or like sometimes when you don't, I don't know if you guys do this, but at the end of the day, I won't get to something. And I'll say to myself, oh, it's fine. I, I'm just going to, I'm not going to go back to work at night at 8.30 or whatever. I have all of tomorrow, all of tomorrow to do it. But tomorrow comes with its own set of tasks. So anyway, so that is kind of my process. Um, let me see if you guys have any questions questions. Um, okay. Donna, when I was in corporate, I used to book meetings so people wouldn't book meetings with me. <laughs> so in, uh, so it looks like I actually work. Yeah. So your, so your schedule looks busy. I wish I could do that. Um, but we had a system at Cushman where everyone could actually just see your calendar. Um, it was a rule that we had. I don't know why. We had a rule in human resources where everyone could see your calendar, every single activity on it. Um, so you couldn't actually put on their block out time. <laughs> Plus, I was in a position where I had so many direct reports. It never would have happened. Um, but yes, it's a good idea. I think other people should do that. Sharice, my boss is the queen of meetings. Her favorite thing is to have a meeting to talk about the two-hour meeting we just had. Yeah, there are some people that just love to have meetings because it makes them feel like they're doing stuff or they just like scheduling things um, or they just like giving you extra work. Uh, Donna, oh my gosh, Sharice, that drove me bonkers. Why? Yeah. Janice, CSS takes so long to learn. Yeah, it does. It's so hard. And sometimes, I know this sounds stupid, Sometimes I would learn CSS and then no joke, I would forget it. <laughs> I 
<laughs> that sounds you. I'd be like, oh my God, yeah, I totally know how to make extra columns or uh, make the buffer on the columns smaller. And then the next week or the next day or month or whatever, when I would sat down to do it, I'd be like, wait, what? <laughs> how do I do that? Like, I would just forget. I think that's part of the problem too. I'm just not interested in CSS. So it's like harder to learn. Um, Chrissy, can 20% discount used on Planner? Yes. Yes, it can for today only. You can use that 20%. It will work. Um, Alicia, do you have people you recommend for creating book covers and editing books on Fiverr? I do. Hold on. I will I will just give you the link now. There is somebody that does an amazing job um, on Fiverr for book covers. It's crazy. And I think sh he, she, whoever the company is, it's only like $45. Um, hold on. I will find them for you. Ah, I found it. You are in luck. <laughs> they do really great covers. Like they look very professional. Um, the only thing is, Alicia, you do have to send them um, exactly what you want. And so you don't have to pay for stock photos. You'll have to, I would advise just buying your own stock photos. If you have a membership somewhere, or deposit photos or Adobe and just sending it to them. But yeah, those are my favorite. As for editing books, I've never tried editing anything except with professional editors. Um, so I'm just going to throw this out there. I think Sasha, I don't know if she's still here, but I think Sasha does uh, freelance editing. You could ask her um, if she wants to do editing for you, if you write romance. But as far as editors, like I just, I look on Readsy which actually is a really great resource. And instead of having to pay the Readsy fee, once I find someone, I just look them up and see if they have their own website and contact them that way. But then that way you can see their references and you can see uh, the other books that they've edited. Donna, that food com conversation. Yeah, love talking about food. Uh, Donna, when and how do you rest? When and how do I, I sleep a full seven and a half, eight hours every night. Like I am like clockwork. Like I will go to bed, nine or 10 every night and not wake up again until 5 30. So for sure. Um, and I sleep through the night. I don't have any problems at all with insomnia. So unless it's hot, like we have arguments about the, the temperature in the house, but as long as it's not like hot or winter or summer, if the air isn't broken, then I can sleep through the whole night. Um, that was me. <laughs> uh, Carrie, I came in late. Will there be a replay? Yeah, there will definitely be a replay. All right, so I have good news and bad news. We are on slide, what slide are we on? We're on slide 59 out of 100 and something. So we're making it, we're gonna make it through this before two o'clock. All right. Okay, so you're in review. Like I said, it's gonna be quick. Um, if I go the right direction. I wrote three and a half books this year. I'm so excited. Um, and this is the one that got the USA Today bestseller status. Um, YouTube, I put out a lot of videos this year and I love doing videos. I did some blog posts for my friend Jessica and I do not like writing blogs. It is so boring. And honestly, if I'm gonna write anything, I just rather write fiction. Um, but for Pretty Fabulous, the channel, so I put the stats for 2019 at the top left and on the bottom 2020. Uh, so they went from 700 to a million this year uh, and then got 11,000 subscribers last year, but I added 14 this year, 42,000 hours of watch time, but this year I had 59,000. So hopefully in theory, like I'm providing more value. Um, the romance channel, which I actually haven't even been on, <laughs> um, this is the power of YouTube. That's why I always say YouTube is really great and so is Pinterest because they're more search engines. Social media is like done and gone. Like as soon as you see it, you've forgotten about it, right? And even if it, if I were, video went viral and it has like a million, six million views, um, nobody really remembers it or does anything after it with social media. But the Lisa London channel went from 140 to 200,000 views. And a view on YouTube, just so you know, if your video is viewed for three seconds on Facebook, that counts as a view. For YouTube, as long as it's watched for 30 seconds, that counts as a view. So you're usually more concerned with watch time than you are with views, because that could be kind of skewed. Sometimes people just watch something on accident, or they, you know, especially if they click away when you look at your analytics. But we're not talking about YouTube today. But I added 5,000 subscribers last year. I added 12,000 this year. So I think people are interested in 
talking about romance, if anyone's thinking about starting a romance uh, writing YouTube channel. Because most of the people, I think any of the author tubers that are out there right now, um, most of them are unpublished. And I don't know why that is. I think for whatever reason, AuthorTube seems to have a lot younger of an audience. Um, a lot of people, uh, th probably the biggest channel ever is Kate Kavanaugh. I think she has like over 100,000 subscribers. Excuse me. And she lives at home with her parents. So I kind of feel like, <coughs> and again, she hasn't published a book. So I feel like when she has a lot of extra free time, right? You don't have to pay. I'm just guessing. I could be totally wrong. You don't have to pay rent. You don't have to make your meals. You don't have to do your own laundry, right? Because you live at home with your parents. Um, and she's not putting any books out, right? She's just making YouTube videos after YouTube videos. Uh, so just, you know, something to think about. But she, I don't even know what she writes. So she's, well, who knows what she writes because she hasn't published anything. But again, I think, you know, that's part of the reason I left YouTube is because I think the amount of work and effort that goes into making a YouTube video is pretty substantial. And that's time that I could have spent writing. And that's why I'm not on YouTube anymore, even though I did, I do love doing it. Um, and then I, I started a second channel, Lisa Latte, to talk about cozy mysteries. And even though I left that channel, I think in August, it's still growing as well. Um, so just something to think about. My mailing list. So I have never been one that, again, like I always say, I don't have to do any advertising. All of these uh, subscriptions, all these new subscribers come through YouTube and through Pinterest. So I think I started out the year with about 18,000. Don't quote me on that. I don't remember exactly. I cut everything down to 4,000 in Q2 because a lot of times people will join your mailing list and then they'll just put you in spam and they don't really want to buy from you, which is totally fine. I do that all the time too. but it is really expensive to have that many people on your mailing list. So if people hadn't opened my emails for, let's say the last five emails, I just deleted them. So then the list grew back to 12,000 in Q3 and I just hacked it again. So it's back down to 3000. So, you know, I don't know why there's this hoarding mentality with lists. Like some people will brag, like I have 40,000 people on my list. And I'm like, do you really have 40,000 people on your list? Because I bet a lot of those people, if they haven't opened your emails in years, threw you into spam, they're never going to buy from you. And now you're just paying literally hundreds of dollars every month to just hoard and hold on to this email. Um, so never be afraid to like delete email users. Like easy come, easy go, right? Like if they came and at once, then they will definitely come back again. So don't even worry about it. Um, I did six pop-up shops. I did intend to do 12. As you know, I got curtailed during the year. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit too. Uh, but these pop-up shop planners were probably like the best idea that uh, I think really helped other people because it gave you all of the tools that you needed to kind of help market your product. And again, I've never really talked about marketing. And so I think this kind of helped people to like figure out how to do this and do it on their own. Um, I created a new rose gold set. Um, I updated all of the covers. So every year I update all the covers on all the planners as you may or may not know, once you buy a planner from me, you always, always get the update the next year um, and you get it free. You don't have to pay anything for an upgrade fee. And I changed the covers for you in case that's something new you want to offer. Um, added a couple new layouts to the annual planner. Um, and I think that's it. And then, like I said, I wrote guest blog posts. So my last guest blog post for Jessica is next month. And I won't be doing guest blog posts for her anymore. And in fact, it's funny, Jessica actually decided she is not going to have guest bloggers anymore. It's something she tried out. We're kind of very much the same. She tried it out. She didn't really like it. She's abandoning it. Um, so I think I have one blog post and I think one, yeah, just one. And then that's it. So that's kind of my year in review. Now I did let's talk about habits. I did make one new habit. And the thing is, I know like it cracks me up that every time I see a habit tracker and I make them too, but it'll have like 10 or 15 habits. It wants you to track. And I'm like, who has time? Like not only time, energy, and the space to focus on 12 new habits that you're going to change and really think it's going to be realistic that you're going to totally do this. Right. 
James Clear, there's a lot, just so you know, there's a ton of people that talk about habits and productivity. James Clear is probably one of the most popular ones, and he's one of the most eloquent, and I actually really like him. And he had a habit journal that he produced with Baron Fig. And if you've never heard of Baron Fig, I did an unboxing of theirs, and they were, remember, so the actual notebooks are only like 10 or $18 or something, but the cover that it came in was a leather cover, and it was like $150. I don't know, something crazy town like that. And then the pen was, again, nothing special, but that was like $48. So if you ever wanted to look at high end packaging and a way to really elevate your price and give people that feeling like they're getting luxury for something that's just a plain piece of paper, Baron Fig is the way to go. Now, Baron Fig made these journals, the habit journal tracker. And again, it was the same thing. Like you're, he wants you to create, like make 30 different like habit changes, which to me is like crazy down. So I have only over the last three years, two years, been only been able to make one habit. And the thing is, it sounds like I'm an underachiever, but the year's going to come and go no matter what. And so what I did is in 2019, I actually wrote two habits. I was like, I want to work out every day and I want to write two hours every day. I was completely 100% a failure in doing both, but I did manage to work out every day. So I just said, you know what? forget the second goal. I'm just going to do the first one. So working out every day is now a habit that I have for life. This next year for 2020, I said, you know what, I want to write two hours every day. And so I wrote two hours every day. And now I have books. So that now is a new lifelong habit that I have forever. So for 2021, again, I'm only going to pick one habit I want to change. And it is going to be reading, because I keep saying I want to read, there's all these things that I want to learn, but I'm not doing it, right? Like my Goodreads, I like you can set a goal in there. I didn't make my Goodreads goal. So now I'm going to spend an hour every day. So it's kind of like, I talk about this all the time. There was uh, Jim Collins, Good to Great, and he is an amazing speaker, but he always talks about those two groups. And I can't remember their names. It was like the early 1900s where they both marched through, I think, I want to say K2 or to the South Pole, right? So it's cold, it's awful, it's miserable. And the one group, group A was like, you know what? we're gonna just do it when we feel like it. Like when conditions are great and we feel like we're energized and we've had a lot of food to eat and we kind of feel hearty, we're gonna push it really hard that day. And then the next day, if the weather's kind of like meh and it's too cold or we're tired or someone's sick, we're not gonna do it. We're just gonna hunker down and rest for the day. The second group, group B was like, you know what? Every day, no matter what, we're gonna hike 20 miles. Doesn't matter. There's a blizzard. There's probably going to be an avalanche. We're going to hike it. Even if it's a really great day and it's amazing and it's warm and it's sunny, we're still only going to do 20 miles every day. And so at the end of this time, the first group died. They like didn't make it to uh, the South Pole or whatever their destination was. And the second group made it. Um, so the whole point of the story is being consistent and doing the same thing every day, even if it's just a little, like it sounds really small just to read one hour every day, but a hundred percent, I am convinced that, well, one, consistency is easy for me. And plus just, it helps my brain to know, like I said, from nine to 10, I'm just going to write that one hour before I go to bed. I don't have to think about it, right? Like it's a no brainer. Like I just set up my systems, so then I can just read every day for that one hour. I already have my system where I work out every day, like the second I wake up. And then I write for two hours right after that. I have the day free. And then at the end of the day, I read. So that's kind of like how I would advise you to think about habits um, and not to do 12 or 20 different habits every month. Because honestly, if you think about all the time, like, I don't know how old you are, like I'm 46, the time is going to pass anyway. Like imagine if I had just done one habit every single year, just even in my 40s, I would have six new habits by now. But instead, I tried to do six habits in like year one because I was like worried that I was behind and I need to start everything right away. So, you know, don't worry about it. Again, you can do how you do it however you want. You should always do like what resonates best with you. Um, but that's what I would advise. So I also have a cautionary tale because I know there's a ton of challenges going on right now. And I just want to tell you a small story about this awful challenge. I don't know if anyone was following me on Instagram stories in 2019, but my friend Kirsten was like, I, she, I, she follows this guy and she's like, hey, 
Andy Frizzell is having this 100 day mental toughness challenge. I'm going to do it. Do you want to do it with me? Let's, it's going to be awesome. And I was like, eh, whatever, I guess I can do it. Fine. I guess it's 75 days. So all of these things were just random, right? Like Andy wants you to follow a diet. Can't have any cheat meals, right? So usually I'm cheat meal. You have like a Friday cheat meal or something. Um, he wants you to work out two times a day. Has to be for 45 minutes. And the second one has to be outdoors. Uh, he wants you to drink a gallon of water every single day. He wants you to read 10 pages of a nonfiction entrepreneurial book. And then he wants you to take a progress pic every day. So, I mean, like, do they sound bad? They sound like things that are good for you, right? Like things that you should probably be doing to be a better person. But the thing is, this was like the hugest colossal disaster of all time. So this is Andy. This is kind of like, this is a picture I picked of him. It's kind of like how he is. And that's his attitude. And he doesn't really resonate with me. And that's not really someone I'm inspired by or someone that I really look up to. But for some reason, I thought it was a good idea to do his challenge of random stuff. So basically what happened is this one of our friends, Jenna, had started a Facebook group and it was just meant to help everybody and encourage us and then be account like accountability partners to everybody. And instead it became ended up and I don't think I'm not like cracking. She did not mean it to be like this. It ended up instead being this police state where everyone was like, it's like that game. Sorry, like as soon as you screw up, you have to go back to day one. So you have to make it through 75 days perfectly. You can't ever make a mistake. And then the second thing, so it like became like this group where it wasn't really fun, warm and fuzzy anymore. It was just kind of like, who isn't failing, right? Inside the group. And then water, we all spent a bunch of time wasting, like looking up, is it safe to drink a gallon of water? Is it not safe? Like, is it okay? Is he just saying that? Cause he's like six foot four or whatever. And I don't know how old Tali is. And he weighs 200 pounds, like maybe for us, like we shouldn't drink it cause people die in marathons from like over drinking water, right? So we wasted all this time. And then I remember I had had some sushi and I didn't, this is actually probably the only thing I learned is that there's right, there's sugar in, um, in rice vinegar. And I didn't know that. So I posted that, oh, I'm eating really healthy. I'm having sugar. And someone was like, you can't, that's, you have to start over again at day zero. Sushi has sugar in it. And I was like, cause I was using the 80, 20 rule. I was like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. And then people were like, no, you can't do that. And I was like, oh, I, and so I posted on Instagram series. Oh, I guess I have to start over again. And anyways, it was all this drama. <laughs> And then um, the conclusion is these are arbitrary sets of rules. So anytime you follow somebody else's challenge, just remember it is not your challenge. It probably doesn't, maybe it sounds good to you, like it's gonna be something you should be doing, but do you really wanna do it? I don't really wanna do any of those things that were on his list. And I especially don't like being outside to exercise because I don't like heat. So I like being in an air conditioned, pretty studio with mirrors and listening to music and having choreographed uh, exercise classes. Um, and like, why is this tied to my self worth just because this guy, Andy Frazella said so. So anyways, none of us made it to the 75 day mark, <laughs> not a single person. And even when he did make it to the 75 day mark, he had this crazy rule that said, you should also add a daily five minute cold shower um, and then practice random acts of kindness. But why? Why should I do it? It didn't make any sense. So just be careful of all of the New Year's resolutions and challenges that are out there um, that you don't do that as well. So um, let me just check in and see how you guys are doing. Uh, um, Liz, time to start a YouTube channel. Yeah, you should totally start a YouTube channel. Uh, Natalie, love the pop-ups. They were awesome. Cool. Uh, Donna, oh gosh, I just heard about the 75 days hard challenge, harder than it sounds. It's not hard. It's just lame. It's like, why it's the reason it's hard is because you are not personally, emotionally invested in creating any of those, making any of those things happen. Like I won't feel any better about myself if I drink a gallon of water for 75 days. Like it doesn't make me a better person. And I drink tons of water anyway. So I think that's really the problem with some of these challenges is that then it ties your self-worth to things that really you don't even care about uh, if you really think about it. Uh, Chrissy, work out twice a day, clearly doesn't have kids. Yeah, I don't know if he has kids or not. Um, awesome advice, Edith. Uh, agreed, if I screw up on the whole 30, I don't restart like they suggest. Yeah, right? Like <laughs> you have to restart the whole thing. The whole 30 is tough too. I couldn't do the whole 30. Um, in fact, I'm just not good at dieting. 
It's just one of those things where I just know I'm not going to do it because it's not my thing. Um, all right. So let's move on from Andy. So what surprised me this year? Uh, one is I have problems with control. So I have what they call control aversion, which I never thought I did because I'm like a good little soldier, if that makes sense. Like in corporate America, I am like the yes person. Like anything you ask me to do, I will say yes. I overload myself with work. I take on more projects than I could do. I even volunteer to like run charity things at work just because I think it'll help with the optics of my career and like how, um, how I just seem like an overachiever to everybody. So I am definitely someone who excels in not only a corporate setting, but also with lots of red tape. So for me, listening to directions never really seemed to be a problem, but apparently when it comes to creating things, I like to do things on my own. So I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of the self-confidence planner. So this is the self-confidence planner. This is just one of the, um, what is this? The Instagram highlights that I created for the self-confidence planner. And it's taking me forever to do the self-confidence planner. And I was like, why is this taking me forever? There's nothing special about it. It's not that difficult. I'm clearly a woman and I know all these different self-confidence things. It's just because I didn't pick it. And so you'll notice like all of the things that I'm going to do, like last year, the pop-up shops, I let everybody vote. And you know, some people just like voting and some people, I mean, there's like what, 18,000 people on the mailing list at one point, maybe 200 people voted. And so I don't know that the voting is really indicative of what everybody wants anyway. So that was just something that surprised me. So for this year, I'm making changes where I'm just going to do the pop-up shops that I want to do and the voting is actually going to go away. The other thing too is the card deck. So like I said, 350 is a low estimate. I really think these were probably like 475, um, definitely to get these covers done. But to get, I got a quote from even on Fiverr, it was like $350 to get painted illustrations like this. So making a card deck would cost me 27,000 because there's 78 cards in a deck. So that's why I put on my list that I want to learn how to do the drawing on my own this year instead of relying on somebody else because that would be crazy town. Um, I also mentioned this before, I really like teaching. Um, it's the whole reason I'm on YouTube anyway, and I do want to offer more free content. So, you know, just doing the two webinars that I did this month, along with those tech labs that went with it, I love that and I looked forward to doing it and I like doing lives. And I know that sometimes there are probably topics you want me to talk about, but I just like talking about it. So it's the same thing. I have like a list of topics that I feel I want to talk about and those are the ones I'm going to do. And I kind of feel like because it's free, if you show up and you love it, great. And then also at the same time, if you don't want to listen to it or you're not interested in it, you don't have to. So uh, that's kind of how I feel about doing um, more webinars for 2021. So what am I going to do differently? Like I said, there's no more voting for the pop-up shops. I'm going to try to learn Photoshop painting. But again, this is like maybe possibly, I don't know, this looks really hard to create these things. So we'll see uh, what the learning curve is like. Um, and instead, so all these monthly webinars. So right now, this is the plan. So these are all the tools I use right now. And even though there are tutorials, once you start using them, I don't feel like they're they're that good um, or that helpful. So I'm going to go through each month and talk about how I use these tools like Deadline Funnel, Lead Pages, Amazon S3, and then give you then do a lab on how to actually use it on the back end so you can see the actual screen. So these this is the plan that I have for this year on things that I'm going to do for webinars. Um, Deliverables, so this is really easy. So at the end of last month, um, for deliverables for December, I said I was just gonna take the month off and watch Hallmark movies, Christmas movies. And I can successfully say, yes, I can check that box off. I did in fact do that. Um, the other thing is, so we've already talked about calendar time, calendaring everything out, accountability, um, yes, no. All I had was the Hallmark movie, so there's nothing else to report. So if you're ready, we can talk about the secret project. All right, so the secret project that I've been working on literally since like, I wanna say since June of last year, I have the whole curriculum mapped out. I know everything I wanna do. I already have someone working on the copy. Um, I have to hire a designer for the sales page because clearly I'm not good at CSS. Um, but it's the Wedding Invitation Academy. I'm so excited about this. I think it's gonna be, I was like worried 
because last year I didn't launch it because, well, one, all the stuff with Ben happened, but also I was kind of worried because of COVID, like no one's doing weddings, but that's the wrong way to think. Actually, because people have less attendees at weddings, they actually have a larger budget to spend on other things like their cake, like their dress and wedding invitations, which also includes signage and menus and um, uh, tons of other things that you would do related to doing wedding invitations. So that's a secret course that I am launching. And again, I said April, most likely probably July, but since I'm doing the month by month planning, I don't really know. But my intention is to launch it in April. So we'll kind of see how that goes. So if you are, so right now there is a webinar called Intro to Wedding Invitations. It is a webinar replay. And this is just something I did for fun. I wanna say like part of the wedding invitation planner. So this is $47 and yes, you will get 20% off if you buy it today. But if you purchase this in the past or in the future or whenever, whenever this course launches Wedding Invitation Academy, you will automatically get a $47 credit for it. So I consider buying this webinar a prepayment. Two things. One, I think it'll help you kind of decide if you're even really interested in wedding invitations. Um, and two, I think that it had a lot of things that I wanted to follow up on that I didn't that will be inside Wedding Invitation Academy. So I want to give you a credit if you're going to buy that. So that will be applied toward your payment uh, for Wedding um, Invitation Academy when that launches. So that is kind of it. Um, what else it was coming out in planner 101 the new and improved one launches next monday um planner academy 2.0 launches later this month again i'm just hung up on the sales page as soon as i get that fixed um we should be good to go and then today's special offer so what's going to happen is 2.0 is going to drip feed so everything is being created new from scratch so every single week you'll have a new module i have more information about that next week when we talk about planner 101 um but planner Planner One Academy 1.0 right now has everything you need to get going right away. There's nothing wrong with Planner Academy 1.0. Uh, the main difference between the two is just that Planner Academy 1.0 was created with design in mind. Like I expected you to do 100% of the design. But just like I'm afraid of Adobe Illustrator, I suspect that many of you are afraid of Adobe InDesign. So Planner Academy 2.0 will be the total opposite. It will focus more on the business of creating planners and less on the design. Like it goes from 80, 20 to 20, 80. Uh, so that's really the only difference. So if you would like access to Planner Academy 1.0, and I just updated, because the vendor list is the biggest one, I just updated the vendor list last week or yesterday, no, last week on Wednesday. So that is up to date. Um, you'll get instant access. You'll get, uh, I think, am I doing the math right? You'll get 20% off is 200. Um, and you'll automatically be upgraded to 2.0. So when 2.0 rolls out, you don't have to worry about enrolling. You'll just get it. Um, and today only, if you sign up, I will physically mail you an Erin Condren 2021 softbound planner to your house. Like it will actually show up as long as you can get mail. If you're in some crazy private island that doesn't receive mail from the U.S. Postal Service or whatever FedEx or whatever Erin Condren does, I can't send it to you. But otherwise, I will send it no matter where you are in the world. So what's inside of here? So you're going to get Planner Academy. Um, it's completely done. It's a full course. It's ready to go. Uh, you could, in theory, just completed all in one sitting, you'll get all of Boss School. So Boss School was an upgrade to Planner Academy. So Planner Academy really has everything you need to make a planner. Boss School is really for people who needed accountability. They wanted a workbook to go with the course because there is no workbook in the course right now. Um, and they also wanted wireframes. So wireframes are basically your layout. It'll tell you page one, you should put the cover, page two, you should put the copyright, the next page, you should put your annual, then you should put your monthly. So you get a complete wireframe. And also it came with 11 different speakers talking about 11 different subjects on how to run. So the best one probably is Camila's uh, Facebook ads training. And that actually walks you through exactly how to do Facebook ads so that you can mirror the exact audience that Bloom Daily Planner has, that Erin Condren has, that Emily Lee has, like all of those people 
it tells you how to borrow that audience and then actually run ads to those same uh, people that are following those groups or buying from them. So it is specific just to the same thing with the copy. It's specific to planners. Um, Jessica came in and did a training on how to do funnels for planners. There's a legal uh, session from Emily, um, who's actually uh, an attorney that I've used, and she is specific for online businesses. And she talks about how to do trademarks and patents and everything else for your planner, as well as just talking about all the other legal aspects about design and things like that. So, and I think a big question too was quotes. Um, so she answered all of those questions for you as well. And there's also trainings on exactly how to get started with WooCommerce. Um, Christy did an excellent job of showing us the back end from beginning to end. Uh, we have a training on how to use Shopify. Um, so there's a ton of things in there really just like be more business focused on getting you up and running. Plus we did weekly accountability calls. So you can hear all of the old Q and A's. So all of that is inside of there at school. You also get access to three other courses. You get beautiful branding that will not be included inside of Planner Academy 2.0. That is a full course all by itself talks all about how to pick colors. It's again, specific for planners, um, trends for colors, consumer behavior based on the colors that you choose, um, and also how to do photos. Then we have Noteworthy Notebooks, also a total standalone product all by itself. Um, digital planning, total standalone product all by itself, teaches you how to make all of those clickable tabs inside of Adobe InDesign. And again, like I said, fast acting bonus just for today, I will send you a 2021 softbound planner from Erin Condren to your house. So that is everything. And before we do the giveaway, let me just see if anybody has any questions. Um, let's see, Susan. Love your idea of focusing on one habit for the year. Success breeds success. So I think being successful at just one thing leads to achievements in others and actually makes things easier. Yeah. I mean, every time I tell people, they're like, you like, why don't you do more? Because I can't. <laughs> like, I can't do more. And honestly, I think doing it for the whole year and just doing one thing helped me to like make it permanent. Um, so that was a huge thing. Donna, yes, exactly. I wasn't feeling his style. Yeah, I didn't even know. Like, like, you should definitely, if people don't resonate with you, first of all, definitely don't do their challenge. Um, but if the items they want you to do, don't either. Donna, I'm an 80-20 person. Yeah, I think it's just too hard to be so strict, um, especially because, yeah, it's just not that important to me to, like, quit totally. Uh, Susan, when I try to do something that was someone else's idea, I always rebel. Yeah. You know what I mean by control aversion. <laughs> uh, Natalie, oh, yay. Cool. Chrissy, Susan, me too. Uh, Sharice, I would like to develop the habit of reading my Bible daily. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, Lisa, making wedding items for my shop was something that I was going to do for this year. Awesome. Chrissy, ooh, a free Erin Condren planner. Yes, a free Erin Condren planner. All right, guys, uh, let's do the giveaway. I know there's not. What was the giveaway? I promised that I would give away a Layers monthly planner bundle. So this is valued at $91. You get the pens or the markers. Are we call them pens or markers. I think they're dual. I think they're dual tip. Uh, you get this handy dandy little planny holder. I think they're calling planny holders. I think it's trademarked. Uh, you get a life planner for the year, a spiral one. Um, you get a book of stickers. So all of this is going to one person today who is still here live. So let's just ask, I know there are a lot of comments. Um, let's ask Google, hey Google, give me a number between one and 40. Here's a random number, 14. Okay, 14. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That is Sharice. Sharice, are you still here? I know Sharice is still here. <laughs> Sharice, if you're still here, say hey. You're still here. Okay, awesome. All right. So, Sharice, if you're here, 
Um, go ahead. I know you're still here. Go ahead and just send me an email or I texted you my number on our last webinar too. Send me your mailing address. Yay, you did win. Send me your mailing address and I will get that order in today for you. <laughs> so yay, Sharice. Awesome. All right, guys. I hope that was helpful. I know it was really long. So super uber wonderful points to everyone for sticking in there and staying. I will work on getting these slides out to you so that you guys can all have them. And I hope everyone's having a great day. I don't know where you are or if there's any New Year's Eve parties. I know here it will be a party probably sleeping. <laughs> I always sleep through New Year's Eve to be honest. So I am probably going to, yeah, just sleep. I'm going to go to bed at my normal 10 o'clock and I will be, uh, I will be asleep when it's midnight, but that's okay. Um, Sharice, I didn't write the number. That's okay. Sharice, just drop me an email. Chrissy. Thanks, Lisa. Awesome. All right, guys. I will see you guys later. Bye.